Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abul Ghait, for renewing his term. His Majesty wished him further success in the political, diplomatic and development fields to further enhance Arab cooperation in defense of common causes and to achieve the aspirations, peace and stability of the Arab people. His Majesty praised the work of the Arab League in unifying Arab positions across various matters and challenges and affirmed the Kingdom's support for all the further such efforts in the service of the Arab countries and people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Secretary General of the Arab League Ahmed Abul Ghait on his term renewal. His Royal Highness wished him success in advancing cohesion among Arab states and affirmed the Kingdom's support for the Arab League. Babco held its annual celebrations for Babco Green School Award for ac the academic years 2020 and 2021 in the presence of the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Al Naimi. The oil minister delivered a speech in which he praised the support of His Majesty the King and the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, towards all environmental activities. He praised the efforts of the Education Minister in developing the educational system in the kingdom and hailed the efforts of the Minister and focusing on global issues including the environment. He affirmed the keenness of the National Oil and Gas Authority towards the environment and praised Babco's award which leads students' capabilities towards serving the environment. For his part, the Minister of Education affirmed that in light of the support of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the Ministry is committed to offering the best possible educational services in cooperation with various partners including Babco and the Green School Competition. The Minister expressed thanks and appreciation for the competition's organizers for their efforts and the Minister of Oil and the Chairman of Babco's Board as well as its CEO for partnering with the Ministry of Education and the Supreme Council for the Environment. He thanked the students and participating schools as well. The President of the Sustainable Energy Authority, Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza, inaugurated the Solar Tech Green Energy Factory project, which will produce solar panels in the head industrial zone in the attendance of various officials who are involved in the matter. The project represents as intended to serve the national objective of encouraging the use of renewable energy and creating specialized job opportunities. And for more about this step, we are joined on the phone by the President of the Sustainable Energy Authority, Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza. Hello, Your Excellency. How does this new factory further contribute to providing sustainable sources of energy in Bahrain? Good evening to you. Uh, this factory, the Green uh, Solar Energy Factory, is the second factory we now integrate in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, the factory produces around 80,000 solar panels a year, which uh, translate into something like 25 megawatts of clean energy each year. Because it is uh, producing solar panels and there is an increasing demand in Bahrain and in the GCC for solar panels, it shows that there is now uh, people are eager to benefit from uh, clean energy. Now, the sustainable energy, one element of it is the solar energy. To have solar energy, there are certain ingredients which will encourage the use and the increase in use of uh, that solar energy. One of them is availability of the solar panels locally. So this factory will produce uh, solar panels uh, locally to the highest international standard quality. The other ingredient that we need, of course, is qualified personnel to work on these solar panels. And uh, we have trained already more than 300 individuals to become professional solar installers. The third element, of course, land, and we are making now available land for the investors in solar. And we are using the roof of the government-owned buildings for solar installation. So all these factors taken together will help Bahrain to achieve the national target of renewable energy of 5% by 2050. 
which translates to 250 megawatts of clean energy. So we are very pleased that we have this second factory, and that only shows that uh, there is a trust and confidence by the investors in Bahrain, and also there is a drive for, to lead in the sustainable energy arena, especially that the political leadership in Bahrain are encouraging this direction. President of the Sustainable Energy Authority, Dr. Abdel Hussein Mirza, thank you for joining us. The CEO of the Information and E-Government Authority, Mohammed al qaid affirmed that the authority achieved sustainability across all government sectors through electronic means despite the exceptional challenges. He affirmed that this advanced phase is thanks to the vision of His Majesty the King, which entailed adopting advanced technologies and providing digital services. He added that the authority provided 504 electronic services in cooperation with a number of government bodies and institutions. Al Qaid pointed out that a number of factors contributed to achieving digital transformation in the kingdom, including directing the Supreme Committee for Information and Communication Technology to expedite their plans for electronic transformation in coordination with the authority and implement its plans in, the, in this context, as well as the authority's endeavor to achieve its national strategy for digital transformation. He added that a number of modern technologies and uh, and AI has been adopted as well that supported the justice system, education, as well as supporting national efforts to combat the coronavirus. He added that the Be Aware app achieved success, which was in line with the visions of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs, Abdullah Dossari, participated in the 155th Ministerial Arab League meeting, where he addressed current Arab regional and global affairs, which require a united position in defense of national security and the interests of people and their achievements. He affirmed that foreign interventions in Arab affairs represent a serious breach in national sovereignty of several Arab states, as well as a threat to the Arab national security and contradict international law. He also affirmed that terrorism remains a serious threat to the safety and security of Arab countries, which contradict Islamic principles of tolerance and coexistence. Dossari said that the pandemic has had a significant social and health effects that require cooperation by all. He also expressed the kingdom's support for Ahmed Abul Ghail's candidacy for a new term as Secretary General of the Arab League, wishing him further success. The Assistant Minister also participated in the first meeting of the Arab Ministerial Committee on following up on the Turkish interference in Arab countries' internal affairs. The committee discussed the persistence of Turkish interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries as it condemned the Turkish military presence on the lands of a number of Arab countries and all forms of aggressive Turkish interference in Arab internal affairs, which aim to undermine their stability. It condemned Turkish employment of its media platforms and incitement to use violence and weapons, especially in Syria, Libya and Iraq, in addition to hosting elements of terrorist groups such as the Brotherhood. It also condemned the repeated Turkish violations of the Security Council resolutions related to imposing an arms embargo in Libya. It called for Arab and international action to counter this malicious Turkish approach and confronting it at all levels as it is a grave violation of the international law and relevant Security Council resolutions and a grave threat to Arab national security. The committee condemned the Turkish endeavor to change the demographic composition in some Arab areas under its occupation, such as northeastern Syria, stressing the illegality of the presence of Turkish forces in Iraq, Libya and Syria and the need to withdraw all forces unconditionally. It also called on Turkish regime to immediately stop violating the water rights of both Iraq and Syria, which negatively affected the water quotas of the two Arab countries, as well as the severe environmental and economic damage it causes to both countries. The meeting also discussed the crisis with Iran and means of countering its interventions in the internal affairs of Arab countries. The Kingdom presented a report to the committee concerning the Iranian intervention in its internal affairs. The Ministerial Committee has issued a statement condemning the activities of the terrorist Hezbollah towards Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and the UAE and Yemen, which constitutes a blatant interference in the internal affairs and affirmed the importance of confronting it. The committee denounced Iran's interventions in Bahrain's internal affairs, its support and harboring of terrorist organizations, arms trafficking and incitement with the support of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and the terrorist brigades of Asab Ahl al-Haq and Hezbollah which contradict with principle of good neighborliness and respect for the sovereignty and independence of states. 
The committee welcomed the designation of Iran-based Saray al-Ashtar and Saray al-Mukhtar in the kingdom as terrorist organizations and the listing of a number of their members on the terrorist list. The Council of Representatives approved the 2021-2022 to state budget following a discussion with the Ministry of Finance and National Economy. The ministry highlighted the government's unprecedented efforts to mitigate the effects of lower oil prices and the impact of the pandemic. To speak more about the matter, we are joined on the phone by member of the Council of Representatives and head of the Committee on Financial and Economic Affairs, Mr. Mahmoud al-Bahrani. Hello, Mr. Mahmoud. Tell us about the process of approving the state budget and how it can further contribute to the the development of the kingdom. Thanks, Mr. Hamad Yusuf, for giving the opportunity on Bahrain TV to review the uh, uh, state budget. Uh, Parliament approval of the two year uh, state budget has come uh, the following successful agreement between the legislator and the, and the government. Uh, the 2021 uh, 2022 national uh, budget was uh, a result uh, of continued uh, debate with the priority of protecting public interest and the benefit with focusing on social welfare. This has been achieved with the physical balancing, a program staying on, on course. Uh, the break, uh, the break uh, thought and agreement follows uh, the vision of His Majesty King Hamad, who personally asked us to protect public interest. The modified budget uh, followed feedback on concept uh, from MPs that was turned into figures. Social welfare include anti-inflation, housing, disability, uh, meat and social insurance allowance, covering a large, sex, uh, a large section of society. Uh, the underprivileged uh, are said to be more supported as the criteria for the allowance is later uh, to be discussed. Uh, we have also managed to maintain subsidies, especially for Bahrainis in their uh, first uh, household. The budget also takes into account uh, finding suitable jobs for Bahrainis and uh, replacing expect in civil services. The government will also spend on training Bahrainis on leadership posts and development, uh, developing their uh, skills. The work uh, municipalities, affairs and urban planning ministry is to, uh, to get uh, 1 million BD each year to help training Bahrainis in new municipal and agricultural advancement. Member uh, of the, the Council of Representatives and Head of the Committee on Financial and Economic Affairs, Mr. Mahmoud al-Bahrani, thank you for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,291 had taken the vaccine yesterday, bringing the total number of vaccinated individuals to 303,962. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,784 with 539 recoveries, 783 registered new cases and one death. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus. In September 2020, the Supreme Council of Health have signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Novo Nordisk Gulf Cluster, which aims to raise awareness of obesity as a disease. Today, an obesity brief book development took place as part of the Kingdom of Bahrain's commitment with its partners to combat obesity and increase awareness of obesity as a chronic disease. For more about this, we are joined on the phone by Vice President of Novo Nordisk Gulf Cluster, Dr. Akin Akskeli. Hello, Dr. Akin. Tell us ab more about the Memorandum of Understanding that you have with the Supreme Council of Health. Hello, uh, good evening. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, of course, this is a, a mutual understanding for the uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, global pharmaceutical companies like us and the government, uh, how to tackle this pandemic, I would like to say, like obesity uh, within uh, Bahrain. Because we know from the data uh, from the uh, World Health Organization and uh, some surveys uh, held in Bahrain that all Gulf uh, countries uh, undergone a high prevalence of obesity. I can give you a very specific example. Maybe it is a bit scary example also. The, the students in Bahrain, 
uh, one out of two students are obese or overweight. Uh, you're talking about the age of 10 and 12. So in this report, we are just put a focus. What are the reasons of this pandemic? How we can tackle with that? How we can just uh, collaborate together just to get out of this pandemic and help people? And uh, this is a good summary of this uh, mutual understanding. Uh, and I can just say that uh, according to double, uh, World Health Organization, Gulf countries have very high rate of obesity, as I, as I said, uh, like Bahrain, Kuwait, and Qatar. They are in the list of top 10 countries globally. And you know, uh, people living with obesity are at high risk of developing other diseases like type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, high blood, uh, high blood pressure, and sleep apnea, and certain type of cancer. Doctor, can so, you brief us about the book's content? Yeah, the content uh, is very basically what is the situation of obesity in Bahrain? What are the numbers? What are the facts, figures? And what are the reasons? And how we will tackle that? How we will overcome this uh, obesity pandemic in Bahrain?